Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. I'm out on another walk and I'm at Cookmere Haven by the rather dramatic Seven Sisters. And I'm out on another exploration. Somewhere, somewhere around here is Martin Snow. Hello, Martin. Let's make my way over to Martin. I'm here because um, I want to explore a very fascinating and interesting event that happened during the Second World War along the Cookmere River. Down at Cookmere in East Sussex, down on the south coast, um, part of this river in a remote part of the South Downs. The Seven Sisters behind me, which I think you'll agree is a very dramatic backdrop. But during the Second World War, this beach and this area was pretty um, key to the Germans for their invasion in 1940. Hello, Martin. Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> Staggering up the beach. Yes, we're it's hard we're work. we're wandering along. Let's wander. Yes. Um, we're wandering along here, and I'm wondering. Although the Germans wanted to use this as a potential landing ground, and there are um, some tank defences, and we'll have a look at those perhaps yeah. a little bit later. Try to, yeah. um, there was another fascinating thing that happened here, as our, what shall I put it, our counterfeit measures, our subterfuge measures during the Second World War. What, what were they doing in Cookmere Haven that they wanted the Germans to suppose was going on? Um, well, they were having, they had lights set up to as as a dummy port um, uh, only a little bit further to the west is New Haven and the, the idea was to deceive the bombers into dropping their bombs here on empty fields maybe a few unfortunate cows and sheep um, <laughs> instead of New Haven itself instead of New Haven itself which was um, a military port so you've got the military port a few miles to our west and then you've got this deserted area and during the night bombers coming in may be unsure if yeah. there were um, lights and built supposed buildings and bits and bobs glowing from the ground yeah. in, 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 a, in a pattern not unlike uh, uh, the real port the, the real port and because it's got the river coming in it would yeah. be very easy in a bit of moonlight to think oh yeah we're over New we're Haven drop the bombs now and then go home and go home nice let's, and let's easy. go home before the Spitfire shoots down exactly and so I mean this is quite an amazing sort of bit of subterfuge let's carry on I'm gonna get further down to the to the water's edge here uh, if we can without falling in I mean it's quite an amazing thing this sort of stuff was going on all over Britain I mean yeah. principally in the south the southern half of Britain I suppose uh, chiefly but, chiefly um, that's what I mean yeah, chiefly yeah. but it was actually something that the 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 war office were keen in promoting this protecting real targets exactly. by putting in dummy targets that's it yes um, how effective it was I, I'm not really sure well I was reading I was reading um, a, a website about it and it was pretty effective actually right, right. Um, I know that the Germans had these two radio beams that they would follow and I forget what they're called um, in order to get to their targets and they right. would fly following these radio beams or these radio waves right, yeah um, but they realised that the Spitfire pilots and the Hurricanes, our fighters, also could follow the same radio beams. So a lot of the bombers, the German bombers, decided they wouldn't fly those so that um, they would evade the Brits. And because of that, they could fall into the trap of thinking what they thought should be where it was uh, wasn't actually yeah. the real McCoy. And so consequently, they, um, they, 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 they bomb the wrong yeah, place. Yeah. And of course, if, if these efforts just saved a few bombs being dropped in where well, we didn't want them. Yeah, and um, lives. It's worthwhile. And lives, of and course. And lives, yeah, particularly um, on um, the not only the military, but the yeah, yeah, uh, civilians, civilian yes. life. Yes. And I know that uh, around Coventry, as, as the time of Coventry, soon after that, they erected the star field. Star, is it star, sh star, fish, star, fish shaped star, star field? Oh, right. Something like that. To, um, um, don't ask me for the actual facts, of course. But <laughs> they were like dummy towns. And they realised that the bombers actually had to fly over the dummy towns before they got to the real towns. So they, they, they put the lights on. And then as the bombers arrived, they 
surreptitiously turn them off. Turn them off as if the as if the as sirens if the civilians, yes, yeah, as if the sirens, the sirens had, gone had gone off. Which is, I mean, it's just so amazing, cunning, really. Um, and then consequently, they bomb the dummy airfields, as you say. Cows and sheep might might get it in yeah. the neck, but at least people didn't. Right. Um, so we're going to have a look at some of these anti-tank defences yes. now. That's it means it. climbing back up here. I wonder if we can get along that way and climb up further around. It doesn't look so more difficult. No, that, that oh, doesn't oh, look so oh, bad. Oh, no, we can make it up there. Yeah. Come on, Martin. Oh. You're a sprightly young man, oh. as indeed I am. I'm looking in a pillbox which is on the edge of the estuary area. I suppose it's a sort of estuary, isn't it? Well, I guess it is an estuary. And, and if I don't fall down, you'll be able to see behind me where we are. We've come over a little bit. We're going to look at the tank, anti-tank defences in a second. But first, let me just show you the approach to the, the pillbox here. Sighted on the other side, there's some um, slightly bigger ones, I think, and they're more accessible. Martin's been looking for the entrance. Can you find the entrance to um, it? I, th I think it's behind all these thick bushes. Ah. We managed to get a, a poke, could poke the camera in to see, but... Um, uh, oh, yeah. down there. Yeah. If you That's hold that, if you hold, if you hold the wires, I'll see if I can, I'll step underneath. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. The bald explorer is going exploring. There is the, there is an entrance oh, here. An Shall I go in? Yes, there is the steps down. So this will be the second pillbox I've been in this year. And it's tiny. It's a tiny pillbox. <laughs> Um, you wouldn't want more than two or three men in here. Um, you've got the you've got the aperture here, and you could be ready to shoot whatever came your way. Whether they actually ever did a landing here, I don't know. Did, whether I'd say they didn't actually get to land, but they would have had plenty of practice. Are you still there, Martin? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm coming out. Got a bit snagged, so. Couldn't tempt you to come down then. Uh, not in my shorts. No. No. Oh yes, that's true. You, you're in your shorts. I put my jeans on, and so now oh, we'll go and have a look at um, the anti-tank um, defences. Well, sadly, at this point in our filming, I lost or didn't press the record button on the microphone that you see me handling. So as we walk towards the defences, I didn't have any of the audio, but you can see that these are concrete, like dragon's teeth, that would have stretched right across the estuary, um, stopping the tanks. There sort of seemed to be two different types. We couldn't get to the other side to film the ones which had more of a conical top. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll join us again. Press the bell notification, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you didn't, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.